Welcome into Five Wide Fantasy. Today's video, we're getting to the Week 7 DFS slate over on Owner's Box. These are some of my must-start players in Week 7, both in your season-long lineups and in your DFS lineups. We're going to build a lineup here on Owner's Box. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to go to the link below. Check out Owner's Box, a $10 free DFS entry, and as well, a free $10 entry into um, our new game format, Lightning Lineups. Definitely go check that out. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. All right, so when we're building out these lineups um, for week seven or any week, I like to always address and look to the quarterback position first, and then we'll get into um, some value plays that I like and then work towards the end of the lineup in terms of spending spending up um, on some of the bigger guys. So starting at the quarterback position, uh, there are some players that really do stick out to me. I think Aaron Rodgers is a big one. The commanders uh, very, very much struggle in the secondary being able to stop opposing passing offenses. We saw them have a good week last week against the Bears, who just can't move the ball through the air. And then the other side of things here that I really like is the Packers pass pro. The offensive line has been great this season and going against a commander's front four that is really good. Um, and that is how they're able to make plays defensively against the pass is with creating pressure. Um, it'll be tough for them to do that in this matchup. So I do like Rodgers. And then as well, always wanting to make sure that we're stacking uh, the QB here. So a few options we've got at wide receiver for the Packers um, in Lazard, Romeo Dubs, Christian Watson's still still not practicing hamstring injury. Um, I'm, I'm getting big time, getting big time uh, Kadarius Tony vibes from Christian Watson these days. So avoid, uh, obviously someone we're not really looking at. We could look to Robert Tunyon, who will probably run more some, some more routes out of the slot if Watson is absent. Um, but to me, Al Lazard looks to be the red zone option for um, Aaron Rodgers. And we need in this format in the one week in the one week um, game, we're looking for someone who's going to have a big week, and I think that Lazard gives us the best chance to do that of any of these pass catchers. So let's stack Lazard or Rodgers with Lazard for this week. And then other other quarterback options, going through a few that I like. I don't mind Jimmy G against the Chiefs. Um, I, I do think that he kind of takes what the defense gives him um, and is able to have a serviceable week for me. He doesn't need to give me really high ceiling. I'm happy with him as a high floor option because there could be some other guys that are a little bit more up and down. But one I really do like is Davis Mills. Davis Mills has had a pretty down season. You're looking at his, his average on the year is 11.4 fantasy points a game on the platform. Someone that just hasn't hasn't looked as good as he did um, in the later part of last season, but I think the Raiders present a really quality matchup here. I like the Texans in terms of pass pro. They've been very, very good. They've been I'm pretty sure they've been one of the, the best in terms of pressure rate allowed this season. So I think this is a good matchup to be able to slow down the Raiders pass rush and then take advantage of the fact that the Raiders have a very, very poor um, secondary. I think Mills is a really good option this week as a lower priced guy. He, his price right now on owner's box is 5,900 at the quarterback position, which is huge here. We're adding him to the super flex spot. And of course I have to stack him. I was considering tight end, right? I wanted to go tight end because um, the Raiders give up 1.2 touchdowns per game to the tight end position, by far the worst in the NFL, but um, they're running Pharaoh Brown, Brevin Jordan, OJ Howard, and there's one other tight end that I'm missing that are all like have 50, right around 50 routes run. I think OJ Howard leads the team in routes run, but it's a complete guessing game. You could, pl you could play that game. It could be someone you go to as a cheap option um, at the tight end spot, but I think I'd rather go with Brandon Cooks, who's the more um, look to player, the higher volume option for, um, for, uh, Davis Mills could go with Nico Collins as well. 4,300 cheap, cheap option guy with some big play potential, but I'll go with Cooks, um, who's had, again, a down season so far, but I think this is the week um, he's set up to bounce back in a big way. Uh, so tight end, let's go to tight end, uh, and then we'll get into um, some of the, the higher priced guys that I like this week. I was, you know, we mentioned Robert Tanyan, Kate Otten could be a decent play against the Panthers, being that we're looking to Cameron Braid out for an extended period. Um, other Noah Fant's been off to a, a good start, uh, or a good stretch here lately as well uh, with the Seahawks. Other one that looks good is the C I believe the Seahawks give up the most fantasy points allowed to the tight end position. Um, so Gerald Everett could be a decent option for you as well, or a, um, who's the other one I'm missing? Uh, oh, uh, Donald Parham Jr., who had a pretty 
serviceable week last last week in the Monday night or had maybe 50, 60 yards. But I'm going to go Dalton Schultz, actually, because I do think he practiced in full on Wednesday and the Lions, I think, are 30th in fantasy points allowed to the tight end position. If Schultz is back, if Dak Prescott's at quarterback, I think we're getting him at a really undervalued price, 4500 on the week. Uh, I think that's very undervalued, especially at the tight end position for a guy that when he's available, he's one of the top tight ends in the league. So give me Dalton Schultz at the QB position. And now we got over 5300 per to spend on the two flex spots and running back. Let's start with running back, actually. So Austin Eckler's my number one back on the week. Um, he's certainly a guy I'd look to even if he is one of the second highest priced guy on the week. Um, a few others. I really like Leonard Fournette. I think this is a get back, get right game for the Bucs. The K- Carolina certainly presents that opportunity. Fournette in the receiving game give, gives us an astronomically high floor. And I think in this game, the Bucs will be able to move the ball offensively. So I'm going to go Fournette at 6,100. And then another one, Josh Jacobs. He's my RB6 on the week. Texans run defense has been brutal this season. So I'm going to add him as well. Let's look at, at, I might come back um, to a Jeff Wilson, potentially he's 5,500. I think that's another good matchup. I mentioned with the Chiefs, allowing over nine receptions a game per per game to running backs. Wilson could add in his rushing uh, ability with some pass catching floor as well, which is a good option. Uh, But let's look at at, uh, wide receiver in terms of, we have 4,750 left to spend. Let's start with some of the cheap options um, that I, I wanted to get to with you guys. I really like Wondell Robinson against the Jaguars. He's 4,100 this week. Um, DeAndre Carter. So Joshua Palmer had a concussion. Keenan Allen, as I'm looking into and, and reading out of out of Chargers, uh, the Chargers camp throughout this week, it, it is an option for Keenan to sit out this week and not play um, to get that extra week in the bye week to be able to really feel like he's at 100%. That could make DeAndre Carter, especially if Joshua Palmer, the concussions right now were just... The, we're at the point where a guy gets a concussion, he's pretty much guaranteed to miss a week. Even the Chris Olave situation last week, I thought no, no, no way that guy would miss any time. He looked like he was, you know, taken out precautionary wise the week before. Didn't even play. So DeAndre Carter, I'm going to add him to my lineup right now. It could be something you change on Sunday, but if we're missing Palmer and Allen, Carter is going to be the slot guy undoubtedly. You could go even deeper to. Um, Michael Bandy had some stabs on Monday night. The Seahawks present a really good opportunity. I mentioned Gerald Everett as well. So I'm going to go Carter, though, at that 4K price, uh, which is really nice. So that leaves me with 5,500 left to spend, which leaves me with a good amount of options here. So we're looking at um, Juju Smith-Schuster against the the 49ers. Number one pass defense, not someone I'm looking at. Um, We've we've got Curtis Samuel, Michael Gallup. I don't want to go Michael Gallup and um, as well going with uh, Dalton Schultz, but certainly an option still. Um, running back, I can't. I think Jeff Wilson is the way to go here. I like Wilson. I really like this matchup for him. Um, some other guys, Tony Pollard did a plus matchup against Detroit. Um, could AJ Dillon finally find the end zone? Brian Robinson against a Packers de- run defense that is terrible. It, it would definitely be between Brian Robinson and Tony, or not Tony Pollard and Jeff Wilson. I'm going to go with Wilson though because I do like what the Chiefs in terms of their defensive attack is very much about um, they're happy to allow the, allow opposing running backs to run into a light box, happy to allow running backs pick up receptions in the flat. If Wilson does that, um, I think we're in a really good spot with him. So recapping the team here um, and the lineup on the week seven Sunday smash contest over on owner's box, Davis Mills, Brandon Cooks um, is my stack putting Mills at the super flex spot. I've also got Aaron Rodgers and Alan Lazard in another stack Leonard Fournette, Josh Jacobs at the running back position, two guys who are both top six backs for me on the week. Or sorry, top eight. I believe Jacobs might be my my RB8. No, I think, yeah, he's my RB7 or RB8. Um, And then Dalton Schultz at tight end um, against Lions, who are giving up their 30th in fantasy points allowed to tight ends. And then DeAndre Carter and Jeff Wilson, who we just talked about in the flex spots. So again, if you guys are looking to get in, playing some DFS. If you're in Ontario and want to play DFS, you can still play on Owner's Box. So that link down below to join um, and get into this contest is in the description. $10 free entry with promo code DFS10. And don't forget to check out Lightning Lineups, promo code Lightning10 for another free entry and matching your deposit up to $500. So go sign up, link down below. Let me know your username um, and that you've been signing up and playing with us. Uh, So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.